All right, hello and welcome to uh, Between Two Fans. Uh, these are your two coordinating fans today, both uh, sporting the grey. Um, not sure what the what the mood is. I suppose Dan is commiserating a, another Premier League season, uh, not in the title challenge. Steve is mourning the fact that we were almost in the bottom 10. Um, so not been a good football weekend, but uh, we'll get to that. But uh, these are your two fans, Steve P and Mr. Dan Scholes. Dan, how are you? Stevie, good. I can um, rest well knowing that at least, you know, Liverpool didn't come second. So you don't look back with the hope. Mm. You know, we didn't let the hope kill us right at the end. It was a, it was a slow demise. But an emotional goodbye to um, my main man, Jürgen. Um, mm. What a guy. Even creating a, a new song for the incumbent Arno Slot, um, his successor. Um but otherwise, um, phenomenal, Stevie. Jeepers, we are biz- at the business end of the season. Mm. We're talking all sports, all of it. European rugby, European football, IPL final, all within um, a weekend, which is, well, actually, conference, um, the Europa League is, is tomorrow, so not right. even the weekend, before yep, the weekend. So. Um, lots to come. Lots, lots, yes, lots yes. to come. And, and then, probably before a little bit of a, a bit of a calm. This is kind of the storm before the calm. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, buckle in, get yourselves ready. We're going to be going over URC, Premiership Rugby, Champions League, Europa League. Um, just a, a prem. We've got Cup. breaking news um, from Chelsea, mm. from the Chelsea management position. Um, and then, of course, um, the first of the IPL playoffs that has just been played this evening. Um, so, we're going to get all, all into it, Stevie. Um, but before we jump into that, let's look back at last week. We have a little prediction game going here, and I've been recommended by a dear friend of ours, Ricky Johnson, and he said, listen, loving the predictions, the comeback's on. He knows it. He believes it. He says, but there's got to be a forfeit. So we've agreed that um, the opposite member has got to wear, uh, I would have to wear a Man United jersey. Steve would have to wear a um, Liverpool jersey, or to be fair, um, he even said Arsenal because he reckons that you are Arsenal's biggest um, hater. So I, I, I'd be happy with Arsenal either because I think... Yeah, you know, I'm trying to decide which one I'd rather like not wear, yeah, actually. It's, it's, a it's a huge one. More. It's a huge one. <laughs> and no more you. Arsenal fans is the problem. Yeah, okay. Well, then I'm happy with Arsenal just because I think that'll put you in more pain. So the race is on to 15. Um, so the, at the end of last week, it was 8-6. Remember, it was an 8-2, so I was four on the bounce, come back well and truly on. Let's see what happened last week. We put our predictions on the Lions versus Glasgow game. Lions going down to 14 men pretty early on in the game, um, but a monumental comeback and blowout win. Lions by 23, winning the game 44 points to 21, doing everything. Despite the, the four, four cards. A yellow card followed by a red, two were on Fenta. A yellow card while we had a red, and then another yellow card while we had a red. No, huge. <laughs> there was that, there was that like 15 minute passing. Not even, like, tw- it's like 12 like, minutes or something stupid. It's just like you couldn't do anything but score a try. Um, yeah. yeah, no, insane comeback. And exactly, if, without it, you would have been undoubtedly out of the URC. No, you would have been out. Yeah. Back in contention, absolutely. Um, then the second, so Stevie, sorry, your prediction was lines by five, minus lines by four. So uh, the blowout win does give you the lead just by one point, but nonetheless, the yep. lead. Um, second game was City um, versus West Ham. The result being 3 1 as City became champions of England for the fourth time in a row. My prediction was 4 0 City, um, and yours was Steve 3 1, Stevie. So, you know what? For your lack of. Uh, a kind of 18 point difference in the lines of Glasgow. I'll give you this one on the buzzer. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a gift. To that, which does give you the, the win for the week, but I'll go over the We're back, boys. We're back. Minutes. We're back. Um, the the slide is still stopped. Do, do we want to go into it? But yeah, let's get into it because I did come back. No, nah, it doesn't really matter. Ars- um, Ars- Ars- <laughs> Arsenal winning that game 2 1. My prediction was 2 0 to Arsenal. Yours was 3 0 to Arsenal. So. My two on be, my two nil being a little bit closer, uh, but too little, too late. Stevie, you back on the scoreboard? It's nine six, and yeah. now the race is firmly on to fifteen. Um, I think there's at least got to be a couple of episodes um, punishment for this one. So we're gonna have to start sourcing sourcing friends. Um, if there's anyone in London with a Man United shirt, 
don't worry, hold on to it. I don't intend on losing this. Just if there are yeah, people, no, don't I've, 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 I know people. I know people. I will, I will, I will sort people out. Don't, don't, don't you stress. We'll go and find like a proper OG one as well. Like during the time when we used to beat Liverpool on the regular, like you know, back when it was uh, when 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 uh, Ferguson basically retired Liverpool as a club. We'll go find one of those. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Calma, calma. Um, let's before we get into all the footy chat, jump into. Um, last weekend's URC fixtures, Stevie, or results? What rather. a weekend. Whoa, insane. Like mental, some mental, mental results. Um, I mean, from the flipping Friday... Just you know, four has changed. Glasgow yeah. and four, all of a sudden, from first. Munster yeah, from, first, full second, Leinster third. Leinster third, and, 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 and literally can't catch the other two unless they fumble it. Yeah. You know, so Munster all of a sudden set to take top of the log and Bulls set to come second. Bulls all of a sudden with a home semi-final potential if they can get through the next two games. Massive. Um, Connacht out the running. Bang. Cheers. Goodbye. It was nice knowing you. Uh, the Lions very much in the running. In fact, the Sorry. Lions are, are basically guaranteed a spot as long as if, if they can beat the Stormers. Well, I mean... Because equal, Edinburgh, you, Edinburgh, Edinburgh, Edinburgh are playing against Benetton in that last round. So one of them has to drop points. Okay. Yeah, big. Well, I mean, how cool, is that? how cool is that for a game? Yeah, you know, that's going to that last round. That's literally the winner of that. But, I mean, it's essentially... It, it's been it's a kind of a, a slow burner. Ospreys were in it. They fell off mm. last week out of the contention. This week, Connacht, um, lo- after losing two storms at home, they're out of contention. Um, so... Two more game weeks um, and one more. No, one more game week. Sorry. One more game week. Yeah, one, it all comes down to this. Week. But and then also, Ulster were in the running, um, but are, are potentially falling out. You know, they were like, you know, in that much space. And then all of a sudden, after the, the season they've had, beating Leinster by two points on Saturday yeah. to actually put themselves a little bit ahead and actually could have, I wouldn't say safety necessarily, because they can, they can mathematically still drop. Yeah, but look, unlikely look, that... Look, that yeah, if they, if they pick out one more point, basically, or two more points, they're losing bonus point, they basically get, they can sneak mm-hmm. in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Let, let's quickly um, cover the results. People know the scores. Um, Zebra, Scarlet, Scarlet's winning that one, 32 points to 18. A bit of a, um, just playing for pride at that point. Um, big win, Munster, 29 points to 26, which put them right at top. Edinburgh, uh, that was a phenomenal game on, on Friday because both teams really desperate to win that one and for mm-hmm. different reasons. Um, Edinburgh to secure top eight, which they haven't been able to. Munster now right at number one, home final potentially on the cards. Um, Bulls, a big points tally. We predicted it last week versus Benetton, mm-hmm. 56 points to 35 um, win there for them. Benetton getting the lo- losing bonus point. I believe with four tries um, in any case, which was um, helpful, but still a blowout win for the Bulls. Ospreys beating the Drags 26 points to 13. Lions, as previously mentioned, 44 points to 21 versus Glasgow Warriors, who were number one when they um, went to the high faults. Um, Stormers getting an unlikely and um, uncharacteristic away win to Connacht. I don't think we've actually even beaten Connacht since the URC um, has begun. So, mm-hmm. very really buggy team. Yeah, a bit of a bogey team um, and just a tough place to go on the on the um, fake pitch. I never like it when we're on the fake pitch. Yeah, that 4G Too crap, yeah, yeah. Too many schemes about, but um, yeah, big loss is Damien Willemser, who we'll get into a little bit later. Yeah, and uh, Sasha Faye Megamazulu. Yeah, but his seems only short term, but possibly yeah. missing the rest of the, the URC. And the two final fixtures were um, uh, essentially... B slash C team sharks going down to Carter. which is probably which, which probably earns more than the Lions A team to be fair. You look at some of those yeah. players. <laughs> True, um, and then Ulster, as previously mentioned, a massive twenty three points to twenty one um, win over Leinster, despite their financial woes um, this season. Obviously, not a full strength Leinster team as they are preparing for their Champions Cup final this weekend. But Stevie. How do you see this ending up? How do you like your chances? First of all, let's start with the Lions. Now going down to Cape Town for the Stormers game. Um, that is going to be absolutely massive. Yeah, Look, I do fancy our chances. Um, I'll tell you what. Um, first of all, I think the Stormers, I'll be interested to see the team they put out. It's a bit of a nothing game. They can't really, you know, they can't catch um, the top four. 
yeah. and they can't really fall out. You know, yeah, Ulster could potentially overtake them, but the rest of the teams can only sort of go level with them. Yeah. Um, so they can't really you only get a home semi final if there's an upset in the quarter. Yeah, and there will have to be a couple of yeah, and and, and yeah. it'll have to be you know, you know so it's it's they will have to align lots no. of different results, and I don't Great. see any of those four at the top. They're really losing their quarterfinals at home. No. They've been they've been that good. So Stormers have got something to play for, but not nearly as much as the Lions, who are playing for everything. Um, so it's it's going to be an interesting um, an interesting one. I, I do think the Lions have got a bit of momentum. I think that I mean the sto- it's so frustrating. I look back, there's so many games the Lions have just come up short, and I look back at that Stormers game where the Stormers went well ahead. Uh, I think it was actually like one of the first or second games of the season. Mm-hmm. Um, and they went well ahead and Lions and came will, back um, Gomezula try where he was just playing tikka taka with the ball saying, yeah oh, yeah this. yeah does that one um, and Lions are nowhere and they came back and I think uh, had they actually had what about two or three more minutes probably could have probably were going to win it the way they were coming back so mm-hmm. the Lions will know they can beat the Stormers I don't think there's actually that much between the two teams this season I think Stormers have been below their level and Lions are playing and I think one of the commentators said that uh, and over the weekend they said it was a podcast as a sister, and they said the Lions are a much better side than their log position suggests. Um, and, and I think that even as a Lions fan, it's, I think it's probably relatively true. I don't think the way we've played, we probably should be more where Ulster is for me than having to rely on other results to sneak in. We've, we've played well enough to have gotten to the top eight. We've gotten more points. We've gotten, we've gotten enough points that would have gotten us to the top eight both of the last two yeah. seasons. Um, I think, so. I think um, you see the how well they played against Glasgow and you, it's the classic frustrations. I work on to do this all the time. Mm. Um, and I think it would have been very interesting had Glasgow played Lions first instead of the Bulls first. Cause I do think there's a bit of fatigue there as well. Um, I mean, it's really a massive fuck up from um, Glasgow that they didn't get that done against the Lions yeah. because they would have thought so. And maybe they um, kind of took a sigh of relief as the red card happened and thought they could walk at home. Um, but there was still a lot of time on the clock and you guys absolutely blew them, blew them out of the water. So I think the Lions at their best, I mean, it's it's great to watch, right? JC Pretorius this weekend was unbelievable. Snell and yeah. Humber still just cooking. Like Warner the, Vandenberg. Um, yeah, Warner yeah, Vandenberg. That, that came, well. and, and out of nowhere, Ravs McClane, who's basically, I think, played about 60 minutes the entire season, just yeah, comes in. And, yeah, yeah, he's like, who's this guy? He's still, he's yeah. still one of our players. Yeah, comes Merver, in. Any fun of Merver things as well. Oh, yeah, just, no, standard, standard. How he's but, not part of that Bokal Ironman camp, I, I, I yeah, just don't know. I think, I think he will be soon. Yeah. If he puts in, if he puts on another season like this one, he'll mm. he'll have to be a part of the plans. Um, he's not that old either. I think he's no, like, no, he's still young. I think he's about twenty-five. Yeah. Um, but I think for me, he just he just fits that that um, the the profile so much of a a obviously ridiculously good pace, but it's the work rate and it's the defense and it's the physicality that he, the surprising physicality that he shows. You know, a bit lots. A bit of sort of Ed, um, bit of sort of Kurt Lawrence in him, in that he's he's, mm. he's deceptively strong, yeah, um, and and a good defender. So I I think I'll be very surprised if we don't see him in and around that squad in the next couple of years. Yeah, absolutely. Let's quickly um, look at what the fixtures are going to be for the final URC weekend, and this is only next weekend, not this weekend, mm. but um, we'll get into it nonetheless. Um, Leinster hosting Connacht. That's now um, a non-game for Connacht, um, and Leinster will be playing the week after either becoming champions mm. cup um winners it's gonna be it's gonna be games. interesting it's either gonna be a potential hangover I, game in terms of well we won the champions cup you know we've won and, and almost our season's already done in inverted commas. god be with connacht wow and then they, they lose that and they've and they've and they've now buckled with us, uh, the home semi actually, to be honest you know i mean if they go another season without, without silverware it will be absolutely mental that would be phenomenal. I, I <laughs> hope and pray it happens. Um, but then we've got Glasgow Warriors versus Ebre. Um, bit of a dead game. Nothing really to play for other than pride. Obviously, we've just spoken about Stormers hosting the Lions. The massive one, Benetton hosting Edinburgh. Um, I expect um, Benetton to get it done. Um, but, you know, you can't really script this um, this top eight um, qualifying race. And then it's Scarlet's drags um, in the Welsh battle, Sharks hosting the Bulls, at which point we'll also know if the Sharks are Challenge Cup um, winners mm. and Bulls will then 
you're wanting to cement their their play. So game could be a hungover shark. I imagine the sharks won't play a full strength. No, it's such a nothing game for them. Um, yeah. like regardless, really. Team. It's not like it's not like it's one of those, you know, oh well should we've lost the challenge cup, therefore we they can't, yeah. you know. Too late. Too late. Um big one, Munster, Ulster, Munster will want to make sure they stay number one. Um I mean an outside chance of Bulls going number one, which is nuts, right? Yeah. Because they're almost certainly guaranteed that Dove versus Sharks. Almost certainly it feels. I mean yeah, I, think, so. I, I think you I think I think you don't even bother playing it. You know, let's not injure our spring box, just just move on to the next game. Give them the five points. They'll they yeah. just put them through. Um, so, Munster will have to beat Elster, who also aren't secure. So, they'll also be fighting for the win. Mm. Um, and the Irish derbies have been really good recently. Um, yeah, then, don't, don't, don't write off an Interpro. I mean, it's the only reason that, that like, that, for example, that Scarlet Dragons game could be any good in the Cardiff and Ospreys. It's, just, it's Judgment yeah. Day. So, it's both games at the same That's venue. It. It's, it's a cool day. No, for sure. And then the final one um, will be um, Cardiff versus Ospreys. Um, both out of the running, but once again, as you said, um, playing for a bit of pride, and um, you know it's those local derbies which are always which are always fun yeah. to watch, and you want to win as the players that much more um, than um, versus any other team, really. Yeah, it's almost like national trials, you know. You kind of feel like now, you know, for example, like a Frank Horn who hasn't been picked in the alignment camp, he's going to go play against an Evan Ruiz who's been picked in the alignment camp, and you've got an opportunity to go and say, I, I, I see, I'm not playing the soak. Yeah, you know. So there's always that. There's always that part of it which I really enjoy when it comes to the the interpros. Yeah. No, 100%. Stevie, how about the premiership? Uh, we haven't been covering it too much. We yeah. struggled to get it all in an hour. Um, but they they had their final um, game week this last weekend. And it we have a top four going into the semifinals. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be Saracens, who actually ended up losing at home 20 points to 10 to Sale, which means that they, instead of having a, a potential home semi where they would have finished second, um, they're going to have an away to Northampton who finished number one. Um, right. And then it's going to be Bath hosting Sale after Sale getting that win, pushing themselves into that qualification spot. Um, I heard a ridiculous stat. I think it's an 85 win percentage for the home team in the semifinals of the Premiership. So, I mean, with that, it looks like it'll be Northampton versus Bath, but you cannot write off... Um, the series with the amount of players that are leaving as well. A lot of kind of emotional drivers for them to really yeah. want to go out on a high. Farrell, the Vinopolas, um, you know, the, the, they'll want to push it. And then I think that Bath sale game could just be fireworks blockbuster. Um, but yeah, really exciting. And, and that again will be the weekend after next. Yeah, dude, I could, it's at the end of the day, it's Finn Russell cooking here for Bath, you know? He goes there yeah. first season, they're in the semi home semi final. Thomas the Toy scoring more tries than a loose forward. You know, it's just. Thomas the Toy in the alignment camp, by the way. And also, it's just side note, I just want to say how funny is that we're speaking about this alignment camp, which now has just become Zoom calls. They're not <laughs> actually going. Well, this one's in person, to be fair. Uh, I think Are they going to? I thought it was yeah, so it, No, it was announced today that it is supposed to be an in person camp. Oh, they're going back. Um, okay. I think, I think, from what I understood by the press release, it might even have some field work. They might even put on a boot. Wow. Um, you know, so, uh, yeah, I might actually, uh, yeah, it's, it is in Cape Town. And oh, um, starts tomorrow, actually. So, what, well, this will come out to, on when tomorrow. So, it'll be today. As we, as you're listening to this, there will be currently, Kieran Hall will be stepping his way into his uh, Bok uh, first, first, first debut against and, Wales. And, to go back is Thomas the Toy in that alignment camp. Well, the problem is no overseas players have been involved in the alignment camps except those that were injured, uh, that were playing in Japan and based and were down here recovering. So, like Jesse Creel, I think, was involved in it last time, as was mm. Faf de Klerk, because they were both in South Africa at the time and recovering from injury. So, none of the overseas players have been part of the alignment camps, or at least in that initial squad when they released it. So, we don't know. So, in theory, it could be. Um, it's the maybe, same. Maybe. I mean, the, the, the Priya brothers could, for example, could still be in the plans. Um, you know, Tyron Green could be in the plans for all we know. Um, yeah. Because no, no, nobody in the internationals have been, have been considered. Yeah. And, and, and speaking of, um, you know, people trying to break into the system, massive news, as we alluded to earlier, Damien Willemser, um being ruled out until November. No rugby um, championship for him. No mm. um, Wales, no Ireland. Massive, massive loss, particularly for... Um, the rugby championship in the Island series. I, I mean, I'd, he, I'd go as far as to argue the biggest possible loss. 
to a certain degree. I think he's become our most valuable player or one of our most least. He, 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 he was completely undroppable. There was no yeah. doubt who was starting in the 15 jersey, and you could argue that he was the best 15, um, if not one of you know top three at the World Cup um, and in 2023. I mean, he barely actually plays 15 for Stormers, but mm. seems to slide it on um, in the Springbok jersey and and made it his own. Obviously, there's the obvious answer that is Vili, who's on 90-something caps, and I reckon the reason he's kind of sticking around, I'm not sure if he'll make another World Cup, but he definitely wants to get to that century. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that's the obvious answer, but your next one is who comes next, right? You have Pure and mm. Horn, who's part of the alignment camp, um, Apele Lefasi, I believe, isn't. Um, no. Warriors Lund isn't. Isn't. But the one the name that we've been mentioning and the one that I would love to see is Tyron Green. Yeah. Surely no, no. he slots in. I mean, he has been sensational um, for Harlequins. I mean, I think he makes the the kind of team of the year for the premiership. He, mm. he, he's just everywhere. And I think has rightfully earned... Um, as his surname would suggest, a spot for the green and gold. Yeah, I think so as well. And I was doing my live show today and uh, worrying news, obviously, is that England are apparently very keen to potentially yeah. cap him. Um, and I know that he is open for it. And a lot yeah. of people say, oh, well, if he wants to play for England, then go. But, circling. you know, so, yeah, I think I think it's now the time in his career. You know, he's, he's he is international quality. It's that simple. Um, mm. You know, he's good enough to play international rugby. He's 26 years old. So now it's time to make a decision, you know. So whether there's a phone call to Rassi saying, listen, am I close in the picture? Or am I knocking on the door? Or am I, you know, far down? Do you down think and... this will happen? Do you think people call that? Because I, I in an interview with Jean Klein, he said yeah, that there was no contact. out of respect for Ireland, he never um, yeah. contacted South Africa and said, is there a possibility of this happening? He just ha- happened to get the phone call um, although knowing that there was a possibility and there, his time frame between playing for Ireland was enough that he could now represent South Africa, he didn't actually make the yeah. first step. A little bit different because Tyron Green hasn't represented mm. um, any other interna- any international so, country. My understanding was when he made the move is that he had, because remember when ugh, bloody S, remember Esther Rugby single-handedly destroyed the Lions by saying that anybody in a contract right now could walk out during COVID because they were so worried about all the money that they had to pay and stuff. So they basically gave a way out for all the players to leave with contracts, and that's why the Lions lost all their players, um, including uh, Tyron Green. And apparently there was a conversation he had that moving to the Premiership was not going to impede his chances of making the box, which you could say on paper, I still maintain. I mean, Jasper Visa is the only player who has it's made it from a start has come from the premiership yeah. or top 14 maybe nicholas jansen from rensburg but and um Renard Alstep, but i mean they came in out so yes is the only one who's actually made it within this box setup that has been called from within yeah yeah no, and non a non a non south african side it's much more difficult there's definitely yeah. preference to the south african teams you playing versus in a south african competition they know the competition well and the opposition well um yeah. You know, even if it's getting your first season of Springbok caps, you just got to get you got to get you got to get into the setup, and then yeah. you can go. I mean, you know? there's no doubt that like Tyron Green isn't ex- better than Kion Horn, all due respect. But okay, I, well, I think he's proven himself more, right? He, he's like he's literally he's been a, he's been at that he's been at a high he's been at that level for a longer time. He's won a premiership um, as well. I think yeah. you know that the form that he showed a couple of years ago would have earned him something if he was playing in South Africa. And, and I do like that because I, we want the youngsters to stay and not just leave straight away. There mm. used to be obviously that 30 cap rule that only after 30 caps, then you can leave and go play outside South Africa. Um, we're about the only country that can agree on a, um, you know, a law about where players should play. Um, other than the French, just because they pay the most amount of money to their players, so they don't need to go anywhere else. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I would really like to see a Tyrant Green get get acknowledged in that way. And it's a pity Harlequins haven't made the knockout, so we can see him potentially have a shout mm. at helping them go at that. But I mean, even just the Champions Cup run in and of itself. Yeah, um, well, first ever. I think it was the first ever Champions Cup playoff game that they won, um, and then yeah. they lost their their semi final or quarter final by one point. He was mad at the match. <laughs> Yeah. Um, in that in that quarterfinals, so yeah. you know, he's for me he's definitely good enough. Uh, and 
you know, I look at the, sh- the shortfalls in inverted commas in this game, and, and I think they're very fixable. You know, some people have mentioned his defense. I think that he's such a grafter. That was the one thing we had to watch him at the Lions. Oh, he's, 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 he, he was a workhorse, and that's what the box like. You know, they want somebody that – they talk about the battle stats, you know, how many collisions do you get into. He, he's, like, he's on a smaller side as well, but he lies into tackles. Yeah. He absolutely leaves nothing up there. Yeah, so I, I think I, I would love to see him in, in, involved in there. Um, it's an interesting, though, when you think that Apri Fassi is having one of his best seasons. He's not on the radar. Warwick yeah. Halan's come back and looked a lot better, but he's not on the radar. Yeah. Um, so they, I think for me, we, we kind of do seem to be lacking in fullback mm-hmm. options all of a sudden. Um, yeah. You know, unless you're looking at a Kirtley Orange, uh, Chase and Colby as, as, as your genuine uh, fullback well, even, options. Even Moody. Outside chance, I think they could, they yeah. could spin that out. I mean, what's he, he like underneath the high wall? But, I mean, he, maybe he's the utility back that kind of Damien Valencia is, right? Damien kind of yeah. he plays similar positions except at the wing. Damien can play fly off. But um, between them, they cover every single position in the pack line, which is yeah. crazy. I'm very interested to see what happens for, for, for Wales because – the Bulls might not be, if the Bulls players are involved, then for me, Kieran Horn starts. I mean, who else are you going to go with, really? Um, you know, you won't have Kirkley, you won't have Vili, uh, you won't have Caden. Is that because it crosses over with the final? Yeah, the same, same day. Oh, crazy. Mm. So the, the further the Bulls go in the competition... Tyron Green. Uh, it has to be Tyron Green. Bring him back. It has to be Tyron Green because the URC finals is going to be Bulls versus Lions at Loftus. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, you, and I mean, Tyron Green's ready in London. So, it, it, I mean, it's, it's, it, we laugh. I mean, it would be an absolute... I mean, it's so cool for South African rugby, but imagine the nightmare if, if literally it was like a Lions-Bulls or a Stormers-Bulls URC final. I think and we also good. and we also can't pick top fourteen players. Actually, we can't pick Tyron Green because it's not I in the it's on the it's outside epic. the international it's window. Any team, and then we go we'll go beat Wales anyways. There's no. It'll have to be it'll Wales. be a team of Sharks and one of the others, whichever one is, and the Japanese based players because we actually can't pick Premiership players because it's outside the test window. So we couldn't even pick Tyron Green, is what you're telling me? No, because Harley, Harlequins would have to release him, okay. and they never do. Same as the top fourteen clubs. Uh, see, at least you could finish the season tom- tomorrow, and, and they Tyron will not release him. To a very depressing one. No, <laughs> um, and, 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 and on that note, let's move on to the two massive finals this week. And let's start with the Challenge yeah. Cup with um, Gloucester playing the Hollywood Bets Sharks. Um, big news is that um, World Cup winner Lucanio Am and um, the Bork number 13 has been ruled and Sharks out. Sharks captain. Final. Sharks captain. Um, so a massive blow. And really been impressed with Lucanio's captaincy in this Challenge Cup run. I think... Yeah, those... don't feel sorry for them. No, no, not at all. Um, go, exactly. Go play <laughs> to the referee. Don't feel sorry for them. Don't feel sorry for them. No, they're doing this to us. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, we were chatting before this and probably France are fainted to replace him, STV. Yeah, I'd imagine. It sounds like Ethan Hooker's fit. Um, I think he would have probably started anyway. Um, so for me, obviously, France are fainted to um, Ethan Hooker as a combination would make the most sense. Um, you could an outside look at maybe playing Werner Koch at at um, at outside centre. Really um, they haven't really done that this season. Um, I thought at one stage that there was potential for him to make that move, um, but they didn't really want to to pursue it. So yeah, for me that's he's playing so well on the wing as well. I don't think you want yeah. to really change that. Um, yeah, and I mean good good news is that it looks like um, Werner Koch, Irvin, and Ethan Hooker, as you mentioned, um, are all going to be fit. Um, they were out and and. All three of those names have been in the top five Sharks players um, in this in this Challenge Cup run. So mm. um, absolutely massive that it, they at least get those three back, um, even though they will be missing Bacano. Um And likely Bongi or Eben to captain. And interestingly, they are also two of the front runners for the Springbok captaincy. So mm. um, kind of a little of a, a selection within a selection um, going on there at the Sharks. Um, yeah, it will be interesting to see um, how that goes. But um, they're going against Gloucester, who've really had a um, horrible um, premiership season, um, ending second last with a points difference um, of negative 195. Granted, <laughs> 90 of those <laughs> came, yeah, came, in that, came in that one game where they, where they then took the three points and missed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that one of horrible. the all-time great rugby moments. Oh, oh. You got to feel for the kicker there, though. They're down. I like just can't any, understand what what would, nothing. And why would you take the kick? Oh, 
horrible. I and mean, then, 90, like, 10, 90, 30. 90, 30. If, you get the kick, if you get the kick over as the, as the kicker to lose, lose. You get told yeah. you have to take the key. You're like, oh, fuck. Wow. Now like, the the whole crowd is like giving you the big one because you because it was like oh <laughs> if you get it over it's like um you know Jez is like oh good on you you've got three big points quality. you got a whoa, big whip missed, which he did it's just uh uh bugger up anyway so no you got to feel for them but uh, alas Gloucester not showing um great form in the. Um, in the Premiership, although getting a win over Newcastle, which doesn't take too much, who as they were, yeah. the, but it's a decent squad well. that Leicester side. They've got they've got some good players in there. It is. I um, mean, they went to, they went and beat Benetton, right? Who have been really good this season yeah. and are in the top eight race for URC. So um, definitely not to be uh, written off. Um, you know, Johnny Johnny May, Zach Moser, some, some yeah, good Santiago players. There. Carreras, you've got uh, Lewis Laidlaw, you've got Chris Harris is there. Obviously, Ruan Ackerman, my boy. Yeah. Um, so is there, is there some, there's some nice players in that um, that does decide. I'm actually I'm very excited to watch this match. Very very key. I think it's going to be goody. Yeah, it's going to be massive. That's on Friday night and to be followed up um, on Saturday, the juggernauts of European rugby, Leicester taking on um, to lose in the final. Um, rugby heritage, to be honest, mm. it's it's going to be absolutely blockbuster. I mean, what what would the football equivalent of this be? Like a Real Madrid, like Liverpool United final type of thing. You know, it's like yeah. those two. It's, it's Real Madrid Bayern. It's exactly. Yeah, what it is. probably. Yeah, Real Madrid Bayern. This is the equivalent of of what that was. So, it's just yeah. There's just oozing class. It's this game is going to be better than I think most Test matches, to be honest. Mm. Um, and they could probably beat countries. A lot of these teams. Um. A there'll probably be more test caps across the two different teams on Saturday than there probably will be in most of the internationals in during yeah, the international yeah. season coming here. 100%. Right. I mean, largely, essentially, a French-packed um, international side, the likes of, you know, DuPont, um, what's it called? Um, Intermac. Ramon. Ramon. Um, obviously, we've got Blair Kinghorn, not French, but... Um, yeah, but... He gross. should be back from his broken nose. As we said previously, no one really is ruled uh, out. He'll, no, yeah. <laughs> you never see a heavy player like out with it. I mean, a fracture, as you made a fractured cheekbone, a broken jaw, yeah. uh, eye sockets, but you break your nose. Nah, you're fine. Yeah, even um, Malvaka, but then obviously in Leinster, um, you know, Jamie Gibson, Park, Caden, Doris, um, the list goes on. It's just, it's, it's essentially the, the entire rugby team touch for long. Um, it's, it's just ridiculous. Um, Obviously, the big one, big game, I think, for Harry Byrne, I think um, that's exactly who um, Toulouse are going to be targeting um, mm. as the weaker link. Um, no Sexton, obviously, in the Leinster team. Um, so, well, I think it's time. It's, it's time, I think. And, and I think Harry, you know, is obviously, you know, Ross and Harry, they're very... Um, and I'll be, I'm not sure if, uh, if Ross has got potential to be fit or not. Um, but yeah, it's, it's the time of the Byrne brothers to try and put their hands up and and say mm-hmm. that we're still we're still around, um, you know, because uh, you know a crowd is coming and basically just slotted straight back into that Irish thing and said, "Cool, I'm the flower half around you." That guy yeah. wasn't even an Irish setup two years ago, basically. Yeah, and so the Burns have kind of let it, it slip. Passing it for months, they currently are sitting yeah. top of the USC. And I think that's a lesson that. Sometimes it works, you know, being a number two and working behind somebody that's. Um, that's 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 that can teach you and sometimes what you need is to be playing week in week out yeah. um and that's what that's what crowley had you know he played in the Munster side then he got an opportunity at 10 took it now he's the starting island island flower half uh whereas you know uh, a, a the harry Byrne, for example um and even a ross Byrne to, to a lesser extent they've right. played behind people the entire time and, and they just haven't been able to take that next step and 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 cement their their place in in, yeah. in that i would say that because of it Absolutely. Um, the biggest contest for me is going to be the Gibson Park vs. Pont, two probably form players in world rugby uh, in the over the last year, um, going head to head. Essentially, mm. uh, the ball speed from those two is just going to be ludicrous um, and just a beautiful um, to watch um, both of them. So yeah, just really excited to see what that game cooks up um and it should be blockbuster as have the 
final two finals, but can Leinster, the third final in a row, finally get it done? Um, I believe we'll be adding the adding two four stars. So four, it'll be I think it's four stars. Then. You know, that fam- um, there was the famous quote last year from um, Andrew Porter. You know, where it's like, oh, well, when the URC doesn't add a badge to our add a star to our badge. Well, neither, well, neither does losing in the your Champions Cup final, Chief. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they, they, I, I do enjoy a bit of Leinster receiving that. Although it's kind of like to lose, you know, you've also won enough. So, I was like, yeah, it's literally, kind of yeah. an underdog story. Um, yeah, but- it, it is. It is one of those problems. Where as a neutral, you don't really know who to support. I'm probably supporting. Uh, it's interesting. I, I, it's, I'm, I'm so conflicted. I'd like to lose to win because I think that, you know, they've got such cool players there and stuff like that. I mean, Andrew Capizio, for example, one of my favorite players. Um, but at the same time, I'd love to see Jacques Rinalba go to Leinster and be the missing link. And then yeah. their first season go yeah. and, win and be it's like, win, guys, yeah. guys, just, you know, what a touch turns to gold. But it, w- it would probably piss me off a lot more because I felt like I was okay with it and now I'm angry that you left. Yeah. <laughs> just, I, I'm, I'm actually, I'm very highly frustrated. I think it's since watching Chasing the Sun. Just been like, no, that you. That's, like, it's just so difficult, isn't it? Now that now that everybody can appreciate what he is and and how much we like yeah. him, now he's gone. Right. And uh, right. you know, you, the, the whole you don't know what you have until he's gone. Now everyone's going, oh shit! So he actually was the head coach and actually was, yeah. you know, dropping bars in his speeches. And, yeah. Oh shit! Now he's dropping bars in the lens to change. It was sucks. Yeah. No, exactly. You were working for the wrong team, Stevie. Football, 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 football. Final game. And game week of the um, Premier League has finished on Sunday. Um, yeah. And do not ask me about the United game. I have not watched a second. I did not see any of the goals. I <laughs> actually had to check the score on Monday morning to see what it was because all the pubs I was at were showing the City and the Arsenal game. So I did not know what was going on with yeah. United. It's always one of those where it's like you, it's so hard to decide where to go and you're trying to get like a five screen set up to see yeah. a single opportunity. I couldn't have been asked about the. Arsenal City one. I was just watching my boy Jurgen the whole time. Just you know, every time they panned to him, it was, it was phenomenal. But um, well, apparently, the Liverpool game drew more viewership than City. Really, that's phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, it tells you everything you need to know about the two clubs. Um, but <laughs> with that said, well done to City. Um, yeah, yeah. Four in a <laughs> row. That is ridiculous. I mean, yeah, the farm, the Farmers League born. It is. It's the Super League. We. It's Monopoly money just absolutely cramming it in, and it's. For, but but before they always get they always get um, challenged, but they somehow on top. But there's the asterisks, eh? There's still the asterisks next to the what? titles until until those charges are are sorted. Um, asterisks next yeah. to all the top. There's nothing will replace the. Elation of lifting the trophy on the day, though. Even if they get redistributed, it doesn't matter. Hey, Emotionally, dude, Mourinho's getting another title, dude. Just, just, <laughs> just let me let me have this. Yeah, but City getting it done versus West Ham three one. Arsenal also winning quite late, to be fair, versus Everton. Um, so Came Arsenal from behind, finishing on on eighty nine points. So, I mean, I didn't think that this, and neither of us did. We didn't think this was an 89-point Arsenal team. So you've got to give them credit where credit's due. They had an insane run. Um, I think they both, City and Arsenal, ended on, in the second 19 games of the season, ended on more than 50 points. I think it was 51 City, 50 to Arsenal. I mean, that's ludicrous um, form. That is so, so good. So, I mean, literally, uh, Arsenal just losing two games to um, Villa which is essentially what what downed them. Um, and big up to Villa for qualifying for the Champions League, um, along with Liverpool in three and four. Um, they didn't need to do anything on the final game weekend. It showed yeah, off. Party. They really they're really party. They're, really pa- they're, 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 they're all still party. I go from last week. I mean, yeah. we're talking about, as we're having the podcast, seeing videos of them partying up because they <laughs> yeah. confirmed their Champions League. I was like, they're, just, they're not rocking up this weekend. At yeah. All. Um, and then we've got um, a bit of an interesting look at who fits the remaining places. But mm. quickly, Stevie, let's get... It looks like, obviously, Spurs in fifth. They secured Europa. Next mm. is Chelsea. And we have breaking news, which you might know by the time you listen to this, but it just came out before we started recording, and is that Pochettino has been sacked. And Stevie... No, 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 no. My the club, the club and the coach... Lock. No, the club and the coach have... Um, Parted agreed. ways by mutual agreement. Nonsense. He's not yeah, agreed a deal. <laughs> yeah, he's being paid a fat ton of cash. Like, what is he? he must have been on like a four year deal. 
at least yeah, I'd three or four years, that, he is getting paid so much money to leave this contract. Um, it was a bit like when um, you had David Moyes at United and he was on about an eight-year deal and he was still getting paid out, you know, up until like a couple of years ago, essentially, for that United contract. But I just cannot believe um, Chelsea dropping him. I feel like I was just thinking this morning, they've resisted the urge so well just to like pull the trigger on him. There have been so many times throughout the season. Finally, at the end of the season, they find form. They have won. They've won their last five. Yeah, they were in the final. In the final, made, made a final, lost it in the FA Cup semi-final, lost that to City. Um, and now possibly qualified for Europa, depending on the FA Cup final this weekend. And now they go and drop pot. I just cannot understand it. I, can, I can't understand it, but I can believe it. I can believe the clowns at, at 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 Chelsea at the moment make me feel so much better as a United fan. I mean, even the Blazers, yeah, were probably how, how this, this have bad. Done it? They finished above United, and that that in itself is a crazy statement for the season. And yet, and yet they seem to be more turmoil than we are. And still more content. Yeah. How? And, well, to be fair, we're about to win another major trophy in in a few days' time, <laughs> so that's why we can still uh, celebrate. And we're not we're not worrying too much about our season just yet. Yeah, so it's not confirmed who will be taking over. Um, it does conveniently come at the same time that both their previous manager, Thomas Tuchel, is out of a job at Bayern, um, and De Zerbi from Brighton has just been released from his contract, apparently being announced that he's, another club has bought him out of his contract. Yeah, an um, unnamed club. Which sounds highly, highly um, probable. Chelsea-esque. It's Chelsea, yeah, yeah. I, I just it sounds very Chelsea esque. Um, so unless, I mean, unless you can imagine, Arteta sacked in the morning. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we, I, I was thinking even another potential high paying club. You know, we've seen um, we've seen United sack managers day after an FA Cup final. Could be yep. r- run it back round two. Um, yeah, well, I, th- I mean, in theory, I think everybody did think it was probably United when they saw when the deserving news broke, because um, that's the obvious one where they reckon it is going to be managerial it change. Could still be. It could still be. Yeah, you know, we're not, we're not, it's not confirmed yeah, that it's Chelsea. Um, but now that Chelsea has, you know, it's just, you know, from, from a timeline point of view, for deserving to be bought out and announced last week, then Poch to be announced mm-hmm. now it does all sound like, and, you know, Friday we're going to have a Chelsea football club can confirm the appointment of De Zerbi. And so I was actually looking at Posh was actually only on a two year contract. So he only had one year left on his contract. Um okay. I think if it is Deserbi, surely he's asked them for a long term contract. You will not leave Brighton after doing that thing for a two year contract at Chelsea. He must right. have he so, must have uh, if he I, is going I'm to Chelsea, I reckon he's on a decent contract. I'm surprised that Posh has only signed a two year contract considering that all their players are on like eight year contracts. Yeah. You know, a little a little more than two years. That's that's a little bit tough. Um but yeah, I mean I think it's most likely to Zerbi. I think Tuchel's a bit of a, a wild one. Um and then have you but, seen who uh, Brighton are apparently eyeing up? But that's not, not gonna happen. Tell me. Okay, no. uh, K- I was going to say Potter back, but never mind. No, no, Kieran McKenna. Oh wow! But I, I mean, as McKenna, why would you leave? You've just taken the Ipswich up to the the Premier League. You're not leaving now. Yeah, no. Like, it's 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 a bit like if you're an Aston Villa player, if you're Ollie Watkins, no matter who comes knocking. Yeah, you, wow. You, know, you maybe not whoever, but <laughs> Real Madrid first says, "Listen, no, are you keen? Yeah, <laughs> He's yeah. out of here." Most more than likely, you staying for that Champions League season yeah. because it's the same as Newcastle last season. You're not going to leave before that because that's you know you you feel like you've been a part. You actually yeah. got them to that place. You want to reap the rewards of 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 being there and playing on that stage. Um, and I'm so excited to see Champions League in Villa Park next season. Yeah, even if it is probably for like three games and they're going to bomb out. But. <laughs> yeah, well, they, they can't do worse than United this season in the Champions League. So, um, you know, there, there, there's that. Um, but going down, confirmed, Sheffield United, Bernie, Luton, I mean, all pretty abysmal, really. Like, Luton were okay in the first half of the season. Um, they were okay at home. They, could, they almost made, you know, their block of flats of a home stadium uh, a bit yeah. of a fortress. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But so that, it's just not, it's just not sustainable. We were living in the flats. Yeah, yeah. But it was never sustainable. Burnley with the classic mistake that that company made. And when will people learn? 
you play this very pretty football in the in the in the championship against you know weaker sides, and you try and bring yeah. that same football to the to the Premier League. It doesn't work. I mean, it's, I mean, it's been happening for Norwich for about six seasons now. What I have seen though, company linked with the Bayern job. Yo, I also saw that. I was like, that's a Ooh. wild shot. Yeah, huge. Like, just imagine that. That's that's like Chipper Moting vibes. You know, yeah. Stoke Bayern. Good. That's you know, de- um, relegated from the Premier League. Cool. We'll get, just give you like the second most successful team in the world. Um, yeah, take the reins. Have Harry Kane. You know what I mean? Just have at it. Yep. Have like Literally, the most you know, just just rock up, rock, rock up to training like two, two or three times a week. Just come on when we really, really need you. Like we know you like you're old and stuff like that. I mean, he went from I think I think he went to PSG before, um, before Bayern eh? when after Stoke. Um. So I'm sure it was Stoke PSG, PSG then, then Bayern. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. First was PSG, then 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 to yeah. Bayern. Just uh, absolute sub merchant, bro. Um, you know what I mean. Uh, Divock Origi, Origi on a bigger salary. Correct, correct. And his, <laughs> and his look, his numbers at at PSG weren't terrible. His numbers at Bayern aren't aren't, uh, especially when you're playing for Bayern. Like, mm-hmm. come on. Uh, I think I think Harry Kane has yeah. dropped. Harry Kane scored more goals in his first twenty games at Bayern than Deep Merting has, and he's almost got hundred games for Bayern. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, I, I don't think that's that surprising. But you know what I'm thinking now. How about a little Lau Foster goes off to Bayern? Imagine that. <laughs> bring them over from Burnley. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Get the South African Bayern. Bayern. Get, Bayern. Get, get him to Leverkusen. Send yeah. him to the champions. True, true. true. Come on, champion. Lever- Do it. And Leverkusen will be playing um, in the Europa League final tomorrow night as they are currently sitting on 51 games unbeaten, Stevie. A uh, top five um, European League record. And still not out. Um, they're still going. First ever um, Bundesliga to Bayern's name. First ever invincible season ever in the Bundesliga. Mm-hmm. It's it's ridiculous. Like what what they've done. The amount of ninety plus minute goals they've scored to to mm-hmm. secure wins or draws to avoid losing um, a single game this season. I mean, literally, Xavi Alonso can do no wrong in in really any footballer's uh, mind like well, what what can you what can you combat with i mean it, the europa will just be the cherry on top right and at bad time it, to lose that streak if, to, if they lose tomorrow no, it, it, it will end with a bit of a it will be a horrible blow um and i think it actually probably atlanta wouldn't mind that I don't think that's a bad position for them to be in because... Well, oh, yeah. No, I think all the, all the pressures on Liverpool, Liverpool will be going in tomorrow, especially to where Atlanta will be written off. And Atlanta side's a good side. They were they were they they got told, okay, cool, you got Liverpool, you're out. You know, it's going to be yeah. a Liverpool, Liverpool final. They went to Anfield and won 3-0. I mean, mm. what a joke. So, I mean, clearly a team that's thriving um, from being um, written out. So, I mean, the, the script definitely isn't isn't written there. Yeah, no, I think it's gonna be a good game. Actually, I I, I do plan on watching it. I uh, got a bit of paddle booked in before then, so go warm up the legs and then go and uh, park off and watch a bit of a uh, bit of Europa League uh, uh, final tomorrow. I've got to sort of scope out the competition for when we win the Epic Cup and qualify for the Europa League. You know, got to just sort of. Uh, what I will say about the Europa League is, if we're being brutally honest, it's got such the actual. This is me from a sports journalist, maybe even a bit of a, a marketing perspective. You can always probably appreciate this, but from a brand perspective the Europa League brand is actually very very cool like the graphics they do the kind yeah, of that's so funny you said because you were just saying before this that uh, you do not want to be in no, I don't want to be in it at all at all I've always hated the bloody Europa League it's, it's, it's a league you don't want to play in but I won't lie whoever the marketing guy they gave it to was like well bugger this I'm going to make this sick yeah so it's just a pity that his, his work isn't appreciated enough because it's a cuck league yeah I mean it's it hasn't got the royalty of the Champions League but both of those European competitions are so well, well marketed and mm. and followed right up until the end, especially in the knockout, especially for I mean Europa group stages is always just a bit of a slog. In the round of thirty two, it feels like even, even you're off to like Azerbaijan in these places, you're doing like thousand kilometer round trips, you no, can be coming down tough. to the Africa to play. But to be fair, this is also where you find some of the um best football fans in the world that Ultra of all ultras. Oh yeah, um, no. Listen, when you start playing ultra. against you know football clubs that they can be used as Wi-Fi passwords, that's where you find the real <laughs> football heritage. <laughs> yeah, no, and, and you know, uh, I think it's it's quite a fitting one. At- Atalanta versus Leverkusen, not just typical names who are on the mm. are on the trophy list of of every single season. So exciting for for either club. Um, it'll be monumental. 
Um, I believe the first club to ever do it unbeaten the entire season. It's almost a pity they didn't qualify for the Champions League to see how they would have matched up there. Um, but regardless, it'll, it'll be an unprecedented um, feat if they go an entire season unbeaten. I was thinking, like, if you are um, Xavi Alonso, at the beginning of the season, you set out some goals for yourself. Yeah, mm. maybe top three. Top four. You know, yeah, top four. Yeah. That I think that's successful. Push, push, push for Champions League qualification. Maybe imagine, that would be like a big thing. Imagine trying to entertain the idea of not losing a single game. A yeah. joke. Winning your, fir- winning your first Bundesliga undefeated whilst potentially cho- chasing a double. Yeah. No, nuts. Um, Stevie, FA Cup final, as you alluded to, City versus United this Sunday. Wembley Arena, same time as the Champions Cup final for the rugby, which is just... Don't respect me, Dan. They don't respect me. Consider us, Stevie. No, they, they don't. don't. When, when will die. when will they when will they listen to us? All the all the listeners here are are shaking their heads just like us because they too are followers of more than one sport. Crazy, I know. Um, but essentially, City to make it a double and make it a you know another more successful season, I guess. Not really yeah. defining them. I mean, they were drawing until. Um, 5 a.m. two nights ago. I saw some horror Yo, did you see the before. photos? <laughs> <laughs> they were looking wounded. Harlan yeah, was I, I, looking in about seven directions at once. Um, yeah. Grealish, I think, just looks normal at that point. That's kind yeah, of... Yeah, that is basically his natural state. Yeah. Um, and But for United and Ten Hag, a bit of redemption um, of the season. Biggest talking point is really that it actually does get you into um, Europa which mm. comes with not only, um, you know, European competition, but also a lot of money, um, yeah. which, which will help. And more than anything, a bit of runway for Ten Hag, I think. Yeah, well, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, you know, I was actually thinking about it. And, and I think maybe I actually had to have a bit of a reflection where we think, because you look at the terrible league season that it was. And so we assume that Ten Hag just had this horrendously bad tenure. But he was pretty good last season uh, in, in securing Champions League but with a trophy on the way for his first season. Everybody was like excited and saying, cool, cool, cool. We're on the up. Um, and he's got ourselves into... And, we were, and what people also forget is we were in the FA Cup final last year. So we, last year, we were in the Carabao Cup final one. In, in, in the FA Cup final... Yeah, so it's repeat of the game. In the FA Cup final, lost it, but got Champions League. And you couldn't think of... I mean, I said last year that he had we had a better season than Arsenal. Um, who didn't win the league, pushed, put pressure on City, but didn't end up winning silverware. So on paper, you know, it could have been argued it had a better season. And this season's had a ter- hor- horrific Champions League campaign, an horrific league campaign. Mm. Um, it wasn't a terrible League Cup campaign. It's another FA Cup final. So if he wins the FA Cup on Sunday, it's a bit... I mean, you, you, could, you could justify sacking him because of the bad league campaign, but you sit there thinking, well, two trophies, two seasons. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not... We've t- certainly had worse. Put it that way. So if he doesn't yeah. win the if he if he doesn't win on Saturday, then I, I still don't I still don't I don't get the feeling he's going to get the sack. You know, I, I, think, I, 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 I just think, think I think they they will back him um, for another year. Um, I think a lot of it's because if you look at the options available, look maybe the fact that Pochettino is available suddenly maybe they go, mm, is this That's now finally going to be the number, Poch? He was the one after Ten Hag who everyone was yeah. asking for. So nice. you know, and he's been linked to United since the, the Southampton days. You know, let alone the, the Spurs day. So, yeah, you know, yeah. is this finally going to be Pochettino to United? Um, that's the only one from you. I think that they might go, oh, maybe there's an option. I don't think we go to show. Um, so I think that, I, I mean, keep saying, I think Ten Hag keeps his job by virtue of there not being a lot of options at the moment. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, I, I agree. I think I think he does keep it for one more season. They'll give him one more window to, I mean, they're not going to give him free reign. But I think, you know, bolster the squad a little bit. So many injuries in that United squad is a bit ridiculous. Mm. But also, it looks like it's going to be a big overhaul of players um, leaving Baran, Casemiro, um, you know, Johnny Evans. Surely got to step out of the way. Um, but just, yeah, not not that many shining lights in that United squad this season. Honestly, I mean, my my player of the season for you, I get probably Bruno, I guess, um, or Conacho. But, I mean, the shining lights actually... Probably been Onana as as badly. I mean, he did or not Dallo, get the league. You know, um, Dallo has also... come out of nowhere and and actually put in a big season for for a nice change. Yeah, but uh, I think Onana's been had a really good second half of the season and mm. found his feet a little bit. And uh, you know, you sometimes can see that with goalkeepers, um, just kind of being a bit of a deer in the headlights. And I think that's kind of what 
it was in United just in the beginning of the season. It's like all of a sudden they're like on the Champions League pedestal and there was talk of maybe Harry Kane coming to the club and then it was Hoyland, this kid, and then he just couldn't get off the starting blocks very quickly. So, yeah, yeah um, not a successful, successful season for Manchester United, but um, one that can be looked back on if you get a trophy. A trophy is a trophy. No, it's the it, Sharks. It it's exactly the same as the Sharks. Dreadful season, especially with the squad that on hand, but... A trophy is a trophy. And if you can add to that, then you can salvage some sort of pride. Absolutely. Um, then, um, just in some quick news, Tony Cruz retiring after the Euros. So, the Champions Goat. League final will be his final game for Hala Madrid. Um, what a player, man. Mm. What a bloody player. Just the peak of his powers for so long. Um, yeah, just a, a masterclass of a, of a midfielder. Uh, the long range passing, like I just can't recall anyone quite as good as yeah, him. Just that combination with Modric was just yeah. filthy. Yeah, you know, and you talk, you talk, you talk about you know Messi and I mean Bale and Benzema and Ronaldo and the the, the, the forwards they've guys. had, but that midfield was so good. And and it almost feels like it would be beautiful if Modric retires with them. Yeah, that, well, I think I, he's going to stay on for another year. He will, and, and he's still there, like he's good enough, right? Um, Cruz mm. essentially saying he doesn't want to continue and be on the bench the whole time, be remembered like that. Um, and he's not completely on the bench, but definitely the legs aren't quite keeping up as what they yeah. what they used to be able to. Um, but that, that, that'll go down as one of the, if not the best, like central midfield pairing. Yeah. Um, he's young, eh, though, to be retiring. Yeah, I, I also thinking. thought I thought retiring from all football was interesting. Like at thirty four, you could still you can definitely get around the block. Maybe not in Europe's top five leagues, but just go get a bag elsewhere. But I mean, to be fair, you don't actually often see a lot of the German footballers um, go and look for um, the like money a Saudi or an MLS, there. you know, really, type of they thing. Often, there. often retire. Um, you think of um, Robin, think of um, Ribery. They they when they stop playing. For like the club, they kind of stop playing overall. Um, so and also he's he's won absolutely everything. I mean, he won yeah. everything in Germany. He's won everything in Spain. Yeah, he's yeah. won. I want to the only thing that's missing Spain ever, actually. Yeah, um, no. In terms of his, in terms of what he's won, one hundred percent, it has to be won, up there. He's won twenty two trophies in ten seasons with um, Real Madrid. I saw. He's probably got another five or three with Bayern, and then he's got a World Cup. Um, the he's only won, thing he's that could make it better to sign it off a home Euros that he's going to finish off with. Yeah, so if he wins the Champions League, you know it'll be a sixth Champions League. Uh, I mean, a joke. <laughs> Bloody Real Madrid, she's their bullies. Um, you know, Bayern Munich with yeah, Bayern Munich one forward Real could have five at Real, and then yeah, he's won the World Cup. So if he if he if if, if he gets the Euros, I don't think Germany's got the squad. Um, but you never know. It comes to the Euros, and you know certain teams yeah. step up. But it is it is the only thing he's really missing. Mm. And speaking of Euro squads, England's provisional one was announced today with some very noticeable exceptions. Um, now before we get into those scouts, is, is England your team, eh? When going into the Euros, is that? No, I mean, I know you live there now, no, so does, has that influenced it? No, I'm I'm in England, so the office um, football chat was going nuts today. Um, I actually had to switch it off at a point because I was actually in, in a meeting and, and trying to. Um, do some work and I came back and there were 80 messages all about the Euros <laughs> so the, uh, the the chat is high here but I, I'm I'm being peer pressured into it from from those who would, you, who would you traditionally support in the Euros or you're one of those you can't just watch the Euros I'm, I'm, I'm a I started off supporting Liverpool because of Fernando Torres so it was Spain but I tend to actually okay. just pick a squad that I I am like enjoying at the time but mm-hmm. no de- definitely not England, I just them winning just doesn't sit right with me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, listen, if they do, I'll be here drawing with them. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Might, yeah, as might, I said, just, just, let's just make sure that none of the none of the the, the, the England MPs are, are come across as you're going to start getting deported. Yeah, we're going to see you back. <laughs> yeah, true, true, true. Brexit means Brexit, Dan. Yeah, I'm Irish, bro. I'm Irish. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, noticeable except noticeable exceptions were Raheem Sterling, massive. First tournament he's missed probably since he was been like twenty three. Marcus Rashford again another one. First, I mean he, I mean he was a starter in the last Euros. 
and and World Cup. Um, and, yeah. Jordan Henderson also been around for the last like three or four tournaments. Calvin Phillips probably not that um, not that surprising. Reese James. When you look at like a twenty year old midfielder being well, a twenty year old and a nineteen year old midfielder being included ahead of you, then it's tough times, aren't you? No, it is. But I mean, man's not playing um, much yeah. game time, and when he is, he's getting red cards. So you can understand why. Um, Reese James only just came back from injury, so I can understand that. But then if you bench Chilwell, you got to be fuming. Because how there are n- almost no outright left backs in that, mm-hmm. except for your boy in red who hasn't played a, <laughs> I don't think a single minute for Yokes all season. Hey, he's, but he's you know he's going to go to the Euros and, and you know be he's phenomenal. Play. Yeah, <laughs> he's going to be top class. You just know that. To be fair, that that back four of a Pika Trippier or Walker, Stones, Maguire, Luke Shaw. Say what you want about Gareth Southgate, but that back four does operate. I reckon he's going full Man City. Four um, central defenders. He's going to put Joe Gomez on the left. Then um, doesn't matter who in the middle. Probably Harry Mag and like Tarkowski just headers away. And then Kyle Walker on the right. Not an actual um, was centre back, but you know just a low block. And then you've got yeah. the creative players to do the rest of the work. Um, noticeable inclusions were um, Branthwaite from Everton. He had a good. Great season for them. Mm-hmm. Curtis Jones from Liverpool, Kwanzaa from Liverpool, Manu from Man United, um, Eze, which is awesome because he's had a great Sick. season. Yeah. Um, and Adam Wharton, who we're just speaking about, the relatively unknown Crystal Palace player who actually at the beginning of the season was playing for Blackburn Rovers. Um, yeah. and nice game I, of the years. Well, I saw years. him. I happened to go to a Premier League game live and saw this. Um, kid with the buzz cut, and you know, and they got that pop in their steps, Stevie. And I saw yeah, him, and he and, and you being and you being a purveyor of talent, you know, yes. a, 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 a basically a scout to be. Well, by the end of the game, I still didn't know who he was. I just touched <laughs> it around the field with a lot just of bloody some, confidence. Some random skinhead is actually pretty good. <laughs> yeah, he was like feeding the ball up top to Mateta, like they were drawing. Um, and so fair play to him out of. Seemingly nowhere. I mean, I doubt he's going to go. There's still going to be cuts to the, to the yeah. squad, but um, pretty pretty impressive um, for them. Um, yeah, I mean, do England have a chance? Possibly, I do think it's Gareth Southgate's last opportunity to win something. I think yeah, it is. It, it no, is. Um, it. And I think it's theirs to lose if you look at the squad they've got. It's... Yes, you know, and I mean, and I think, you know, if, if the likes of a Rashford Sterling, for example, were playing at their best, I mean, then it makes yeah, it even worse. The French squad. Yeah, but I think that 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 French squad is. I worry about the French squad. I, I think it's similar as, as England. I think on paper it's it's a great squad, um, but where the things are all still all right and 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 drilling well in that squad. Um, <laughs> also, remember that Pogba has got the juju on the French squad as well. He's called his Sangoma, and he's he sorted that out after his ban, all his issues there. So they're going to try and get over is, there. Yeah, all I know is that Angola Kante is back, which means they have a chance. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, I'm actually really, really excited to see him play again after him going to Saudi. Um, but, yeah, no, they, they, on paper, England have an insane squad. The amount of talent up front. Is- the attacking talent is, I think, that's the one thing. They've got the best attacking t- players in, in this in this oh. Euros. Um, okay. I mean, it's what... Bucket, what Foden, um, Bellingham. Palmer, Bellingham. Um, Madison also, has been fantastic. Yeah, Madison, you know, I, it's, I don't think they actually should be playing Bellingham in an attacking role. I think he, no, I don't think so either. I think he should be playing box, in a midfield three, box to box with Declan Rice, just legs. Yeah, legs. I mean, for me, it makes sense. You know, you, I, I keep saying, you know, I look at like Declan Rice, Bellingham, and a Kobe Manu in terms of three kind of slightly different players. And I was like, dude, that could be an England midfield for the next ten years, easy. Okay. Enough on the hype on Kobe Manu for 10 years. That is wild. Um, well, he'll be only 29 after those 10 years. So Yes, yes. But we've you're been picking what? You're going to pick Curtis Jones ahead of Manu. Come now. Come no, now. I Back my boy here. Not Curtis Jones. I don't think Curtis Jones will make the squad. But I also... <laughs> I've, I've, seen a, I've seen a mistake in Kobe Manu. And he's, like, you know, beautiful to watch the calm on, on, under the ball. But... He's still got it. He's still got a one. I think the end of next season will have a clearer indication. But listen, maybe I'll be eating my words. Maybe, maybe a, you know, future future Ballon d'Or winner. You know, who knows? Correct. At least um, you know he could be the next Tony Cruz. <laughs> yeah. Well, out one out one in. Um, yeah. There we go. Stevie, let's move to the IPL. 
And Wait, time- drum roll. This time next week, we will not be talking about the IPL, or we will be. We will be reviewing the yeah. IPL, which feels like it started before the Rugby World Cup. Yeah, no, it's it's true. And maybe in 2022, before COVID even came. Yeah. Was, um, but um, the first playoff game being played um, between um, number one and number two, which ended up being KKR and SRH, um, that was won by KKR very comfortably by eight mm. wickets. 38 balls remaining, um, no problems there. So they put themselves straight into the final. And essentially now it's two semifinals. Um, and the first being tomorrow, Rajasthan Royals playing RCB, who can we just take a second to talk about? Fair for good. We wrote them off. After you wrote them off, told them how RCB system's broken, as everyone yeah, else did. Bad bowlers, bad auction. What are they supposed to do? Ridiculous, yeah. run by a bunch of idiots. Well, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, as as you pointed out, they went, they started the season, lost one, won one, one lost one. six, won six. Yeah. I mean, what it's, in the world? It's childish. Crazy. So they went on to um, beat CSK, essentially, by, by 27 runs in their each of their last games of the season. And by doing so, knocking out CSK out of mm. nowhere. Um, and... Actually, just CSK choking, which is something I feel like I've never said in my life, um, mm. you know, to get into the playoffs. They feel like it, it should be the other way around. So, RCB never won an IPL trophy. Maybe this is the time. This is what they, they needed. You know, they needed to be written off, more. come from behind. I mean, know. Vera Kohli is still like over 120 runs clear of the next highest run scorer, mm. averaging 64 at the bat. Just ridiculous and it hasn't been one of those he's got so many runs but still not everyone's speaking about him he just yeah. does it it's, and it's because everyone wrote off rcb that his runs going and i think it's also because it's been very very coley and that's not been it's not been barbaric you know no, he's a much classier bass than the likes of a travis here <laughs> yeah. who's just yeah. just just caught and like fraser mcgurk and they're just going out there just it's just power hitting yeah, you know, no, so it's barbaric. Like it's the like that shot kind of used to play T20 cricket, you know? Yeah. Drives. <laughs> yeah. And everyone's like, no, boo, just stand on the back foot and just like slap yeah. him over cover for six. Yeah. Old Justin Kempway. Um, yeah, exactly. But ahead of his time. But, yeah. Yeah. Ahead of his time. Massively. I mean, you, even like I think of Herschel Gibbs, Jesus, the mm. bag that he could have gotten if he was just came up. As opposed to the bags he got through. Yeah. Well, <laughs> maybe still. Who knows? Yeah. Um, no, no accusations there uh, whatsoever. But essentially, it's going to be um, the winner of um, Rajasthan Royals versus RCB will play um, Sunrises Hyderabad um, on Friday. And the winner of that will then play KKR in the final. So because Sunrises came second, they, although having lost the first playoff game, they said get the second opportunity versus the winner of three and four. Um, so, yeah, very exciting. I mean, uh, how, how do you see the, the Rajasthan RCB one going? Or are we going to well, get into that? That's going to be our prediction, actually. We can't well, actually you, pop that off right part now. Of, part, part of us. So, so basically what we decided for our three predictions, we're going to do the two, we're going to do the Challenge Cup, the Champions Cup, and we're trying to predict um, who is going to join KKR in the final. It's Otherwise, between... we're not going to make one prediction for the whole IPL and for the amount of airtime it's got and that does not seem right. Yeah, all. probably far more uh, airtime than it probably deserved to be honest, but the IPL has been going for ages. <laughs> um, so we've got, we've, got to, we've got to choose basically between Rajasthan, RCB, Sunrises, who's going to join KKR. So one of these predictions is going to go horribly wrong because if we picked one of the our, um, Rajasthan or RCB and they lose tomorrow, then well, by Thursday, you're already out. Yeah. Um, so the question is, is you know, how daring are you well, feeling? Is it the let's, sunrises? Let's, let's make the... this prediction and then we can we can chat through because I don't think either of us want to give too much away of what we think. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm happy to count us in if you've got if you've got the team in your mind. We're just going to say the team, and if yeah. if we say the same one, then we can we can discuss, we'll discuss. how we, how we yeah. kind of mediate that. Okay, I'm I'm going to go in three, two, one. RCB. Sunrises. Yeah, um, I thought you were going to... I wondered if you were going to be brave enough to go there. I thought hey. you were going to because of Fluff. I, and I want, I, here's the goat. Well, you know what it is? Uh, and I said the same thing to somebody the other day. I said, you know, I've got terrible luck. So if I predict something, 
the buckle. So much like last week when I when it was the PGA Championship, I refused to put any of the SA golfers into my fantasy team. And Dean Burmester got, what, a T12. Yeah. And I somebody know. said, like, don't you back Dean? I was like, I reckon Dean could be in contention. And he was in contention, but I was like, if I put him on my fantasy team, he'll miss he'll the title. Yeah, it's exactly so- <laughs> like in fantasy Premier League. If you want to, if you want, if you want the Oak in your team to score, just take him out yeah. of your team. Simple Correct. Um, Correct. So I'd like to see RCB. Yeah, I feel like I'm but, heavily gone with the heart overhead here. Yeah. And I'm not even well, going to be fan. Momentum's a strange thing, eh? Momentum's a strange thing. I mean, six on a bounce, there's nobody oh. in better form than that. They would have to go nine on the bounce when you think about it. That would be insane. Um, like to think yeah. of six games ago, they said to themselves, okay, basically out. nine on the bounce. That's all we need to do. Yeah, guys, it's simple. We win nine games in a row, we win the <laughs> IPL. Oh, cool. <laughs> With like a like a hot net run rate as well. Yeah, I mean the two guys have been doing it for them, Virat and Faf, um, need to continue to stand up, um, and they have been. It's always oh, Faf's been, catch. Oh, yeah, ridiculous! I mean, such a good fielder, just really a timeless cricketer. But um, yeah, I mean, classic Faf just coming into form just before the Proteas go and play more games to chuck in another uh, Everybody's like, oh, why is he in the Proteas squad? And yeah. I, mean, I mean, if he wins the IPL, that discussion will be going off the charts. So, oh, um, yeah. Watch it band like 100 in the IPL and we'll sit there going, <laughs> should he, should he, should yeah. he? We'll be discussing this once again. Um, but yeah, I think, so we're not giving Rodgers and Royals a chance who actually in the beginning of the season were, I think, unbeaten for the Red first time. So, mm. um, dropped off a little bit in the latter half, but Stevie, let's get into the, the Challenge Cup um, final, Gloucester versus Sharks that we spoke about. Um, have you got a score in mind? I do. I do indeed. I do indeed. Okay, count us in. Okay. Three, two, one. Gloucester by Gloucester seven. By five. Oh, okay. Gloucester. Wow. Going against your own. Yeah, well, they're flipping. If it wasn't for the bloody Sharks, I'd be really basically in the Blooming Champions Cup and in the URC top eight. So, you know what? <laughs> that cup just beat them. That, that's, that's massive. So, so you've seen Gloucester edging them out there, Stevie? Yeah, I think the, I think it's a step too far from the Sharks. I think that you, for as much as they are starting to put that inconsistency um, part behind them, I don't. I just don't... Look, it'll be fantastic if they do. I just don't see them being able to... They snuck through. They burgled that semi-final. Yeah. No, they had no rights winning that game. And um, compared to, I think, Gloucester, where Benetton were playing well and they still put them away, I think that they've got more... I think they're a better team. Um, I think they've got a bit more chemistry and I think they've probably got a bit more BMT. No also, them. they're not playing at home, but they're playing yeah, in England. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're so... they one ground advantage for them. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the massive um, Spurs stadium will be interesting to see if they're... I'm sure there, there definitely will be a portion of, of Sharks fans and I'm hoping to get out there. If not, um, behind the scenes, definitely up in the stands. Um, so I'm excited. I, I don't know if I'll don the Sharks jersey, but I'll be I'll be supporting them, um, no doubt. So um, up, the, up, the, up the South African teams, um, I think it'll be cool to to get the first South African Europe Europe, South African, European, South African champions. Yo, and imagine, and imagine the first South African team to win the European is probably the most undeserving squad yeah. we've had in the first couple <laughs> of years. So funny. Yeah. Like, we come to think about it like that. Yeah, maybe not. Like Dobbers out there going, "Oaks, I'm building building a, like a dynasty here," and yeah. the country's like, "Well, we're shit, but we managed it." So, <laughs> but he's like, "I should have been sacked four months ago, but here we are." Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, it's gonna be like yeah. United on Monday. The Sharks can confirm we have parted ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Facts, facts, facts. Plumtree is gone in the morning. He's gonna be on the plane. He's gonna arrive, and they're like, "We booked you a plane in New Zealand." He's like, "What do you mean?" Like, "No, no, no. thanks for the trophy, but be, away, away." When they break the news, he's probably gonna still be pissed. Um, from yeah, the they've actually, they've actually, they've actually, an unnamed South African club has bought out Cash for Norway from the Lions. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but then the last game and the big one, the biggest club game. There is mm. Stevie Champions Cup, and the two biggest teams, Leinster, to lose. Um, to lose or not to lose? Mind. I do. Okay. I, count us in. I, I'll count us in. Three, two, one, Leinster by Leinster five. Leinster by seven. Ooh, not very. We're pretty consistent to our, our thinking yeah. here. But, yeah, um, I, 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 I think I, I want to lose to win, but I just think Leinster will. 
and I probably would. They just have to, don't they? You know, it's, yeah. you just can't. You, you can't, can't go this many finals and keep losing them and keep adding, keep making your squad better every single year. It's a better squad. It's yeah. adding to the coaches. Yeah, they're growing. Coming next year, oh, and, <laughs> and, and Jordy Barrett. You know, it's just <laughs> it's laughable. Absolutely laughable. So uh, that's, I mean, at the moment, it's literally like a, a social experiment of how good of a side can we put together that can't win a trophy without winning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, You're doing nothing. <laughs> yeah, literally, like the uh, most successful, the, the best, the best, the most unsuccessful best squad of all time. Yeah, they're kind of like RCB, to be fair. Yeah, RCB, <laughs> Ireland Rugby. Yeah, oh, tough. Um, I mean, they're pretty much all the Irish teams, so you know, yeah. come get familiar with it. Oof, might land me in hot water that one. But um, Stevie, jeez, great show and great fixtures, um, great sports yeah. this weekend. We yeah, barely, get the, we get the beers and ice. We didn't even touch on the PGA Championship, so yeah. let's quickly say well then, um, Zander Shuffle or getting but also game. Bryson back in the mix. Yeah, so I mean cool he has been. Him though. Off like he has that. been. He's been dancing around those majors. Yeah. He's always in and around it. Um, He's going to win another one soon. And it's going Imagine to shooting 20 better. under, the fourth best score of all time in a major and coming up short. Yeah. But and also class act. I mean, he was on the he was on the range preparing for a potential playoff. And the first thing he did is walk straight back to the 18th to find Zander and congratulate him. It's amazing how he was one of the most despised golfers in world golf, went to and he, Saudi, and everybody yeah. just continued to hate him. And in the last year, he's managed to become one of the most likable golfers on the circuit, if not the most likable. I still think he split so many opinions, but it was so many preconceived ideas of him. He was just yeah. a big brute. That YouTube channel was a stroke of genius. Yeah, no, it's good good, good PR, good marketing um, from from him and his team. But yeah, he, I mean, he, he played some, some unreal golf. Um, I was very bummed with my boy, Victor, Coming pretty close, um, yeah. but um, not enough in the end. So, yeah. Anyways, that's our quick thirty second. Yeah, it was a great. It was a great tournament. Though. It was a really, really cool leaderboard in the last day. Lots of cool names up there. Yeah. Um, Burmester in in the hunt just didn't really. Just nothing dropping for him in the last day. But he's secured um, an exemption for next year, so he'll be back. Yeah. Um, which is good to see. We need to see more of our top South African golfers playing in the yeah. majors. US opens in about two weeks' time as well. Um, Eric van Rooyen has, has qualified, which is cool to see. Um, so and and Scotty Scheffler going to jail. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, 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 Scotty, the Scotty villain arc. And what's yeah. it? And they're talking I, about I was so sure he was going to win it. I thought it was going to be yeah. the most Scotty thing. After what that Friday, think? after spending after spending the morning in jail and going and shooting like a sixty-eight, you're going, no man, this oak is robot. He's not yeah. human. How can he do this? And then, yeah. but also they're talking about his, his caddy. The fact that his caddy missed Saturday because he went to go watch his daughter graduate. All of a sudden, yeah. it's like so. Maybe it's not Scotty Scheffler. It's his caddy. His caddy misses one yes. day of work, and Scotty forgets how to play golf. Yeah, and exactly, and goes to jail. And did so, you see, by the way, that when he teed off in that round on Friday, somebody already had the shirt printed with his mugshot? Yeah, unbelievable. So for those who who aren't familiar, Scotty Scheffler, world number one, the most informed golfer in the last four years. And, drive over a cop. Um, is, <laughs> not drive over a cop, but the most, as Stevie called it, boring, but yeah. you know, the, the cleanest record you've ever seen, God-loving, family man, um, Scotty Sheffield, just like a kind of picture perfect um, figure, gets yeah, on real head way. boy vibes. Yeah, big head boy vibes. Um, and on his way, essentially goes past um, an accident that had happened and just disobeys apparently a cop's orders to pull over on the side of the road, then gets escorted in hang. No, no, no. But did, did you hear the, the wording? Um, the policeman asked him to slow it down. He refused, after which the policeman attached himself to the vehicle. Yeah. I, mean, I still don't want to know what that means. So does this guy like jump on the car? Did he just like grab a window or something? Yeah, he was on his way to literally to the golf course. He could take yeah, he was like, listen, I've got, I've got a tee for 10 oaks. In jail, started warming up in jail, in the jail cell, the holding cell, got released. They delayed the tournament by an hour. Also, what's so funny is there was no one else really who they're going to delay that tournament for. You know what I mean? There are very few people, but Scotty is one of them. Um, and he actually shot under par that day, which That's is 68. Just, uh, like, next, well under par. Next day. And the next um, day, just breaking his actually his streak of um, consecutive um, rounds that shooting par or or less. Um, he didn't win though. Sorry. Yeah. And so, like, hey, this is the end. I've, I've said this is the end of the Scottish Jeff. The rain's over. He's rattled. He's done. Going to jail. Yeah. No, lock him up. 
I think he's actually already been um, cleared of all charges, but anyway. Yeah. Um, okay, well, we've but, extended the show. By now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what else is there? I'm busy watching some NASCAR over here, man. <laughs> Just talking about, talking about the done. Formula One. <laughs> Everyone, they have other yeah. important things to do. Yeah, the last thing you need to do before you leave, though, is please smash the like, please share um, with those that you also think will enjoy. Um, please um, put your thoughts down in the comments. What you agree, what you disagree with, um, mostly what you disagree with, um, because you know we probably have. Um, opinions so don't be are, a yes man you know no, don't be a yes man bro um but stevie thank you very much until next thank week you. we'll know lots of rugby champions we'll know an ipl champion um I'm an FA Cup champion if it could be an champion yeah Steve finals, can be finals 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 mm-hmm. jeez what a weekend we have in store yep and you'll catch a lot of the action on the channel so make sure you come and join us for the watch longs as well stevie Dan, keep well Thank you very much. And listeners, thank you very much for tuning in. We will chat to you next week.